looking for an itinerary for your upcoming trip to Istanbul? Here I share with you a four-day itinerary that covers from the most visited places in the city to those less touristy on the Asian side, how to move around, and even areas to stay. So let's get into it. Istanbul has a wide transportation system, but in this video I'm going to explain only the ones that connect two of the main touristy areas. That means the Old Peninsula and Taksim or Istiklal area. This is the M2 metro line that runs from Yenikapu in the Old Peninsula to Hachusman in Sariyar district. If you're staying around Taksim, Istiklal Street or somewhere around Galata Tower, then Taksim and Shishan metro stations will get you to the area near Grand Bazaar and Suleimani Mosque, which is Besnejiler metro station. This line is very convenient, plus its station Halic offers some of the most stunning views of the city. For tourists staying around the Old Peninsula, then the T1 line is the one you'll mostly use. It runs from Kabatash to Bajilar Station and passes through Sultanahmet Square, Grand Bazaar, Eminunu Port and Karaköy. This last one is the closest area to Galata Tower. This is a very convenient funicular that connects Karaköy and Galata. If you want to avoid going up the hill to Galata from Karaköy, then we recommend you taking it. The entrance is found across the T1 tram line at Karakoy Station. This is my favorite way of traveling from continent to continent because the views are amazing, especially during the sunset. Some of the main ports close to the touristy areas are Eminönü, Karakoy, Kabatash, all of these in the European side and Üsküdar and Kadikoy, both on the Asian side. Navigation apps like Google Maps are very accurate to navigate in the city. To be honest, this is the only one I have been using for almost a decade living here and it has never failed me. To have access to all sorts of transportation, you must purchase a card called Istanbul Card, and they can easily be found from any yellow machine at any tram metro stations or ferry ports. There are two types of cards tourists can access to, but to fully see the cons and pros of each one of these and choose the most suitable for you, we recommend you to watch this other video on our channel. And before we continue with our video, we would love to thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video. In case that you don't know what Surfshark is, let me tell you that this is an amazing VPN that will allow you to connect to censored websites at your current location. By connecting to a server in a different country and establishes a protected and private connection. Also, if you need to use the public Wi-Fi, you can do it without worrying because your private information will be fully protected. And in case that you need to do some important transactions from your home country, you can also do it by just exchanging your current location. What will you get? Unlimited devices only in one account and a three-day money-back guarantee. That means that there's absolutely no risk for you to try it out. All you have to do is click in the link, share it in the description box and pin comment and enter my promo code Betty Istanbul Tips for an exclusive deal and get three additional months for free. If it's your very first time in the city, we always recommend to be as close as possible to the main attractions. This way, you'll save plenty of time, plus these areas have easy access to the lines we mentioned in this video. Plus, if you like to walk, you can also access mostly everything by foot. Another great option is also staying in the neighborhood of Peyolu, especially around Galata Tower and Karakuy because these two areas are very well connected by metro, tram, funicular and even a ferry port. And also reaching Sultanahmet from this area is very easy and you can reach it in a very short time. On the other hand, if you would like to experience a more authentic and also much more affordable side of the city, you can also choose to stay in Kadikoy. This neighborhood is on the Asian side of the city, is very budget friendly, it's a very local area and very lively, especially at night. And it's also very well connected to, to the old peninsula where Sultanahmet is and even Galata area with just one ferry from Kadikoy to either Eminonu or from Kadikoy to Karakoy.
Tokape, which was the center of the Ottoman Empire and residence of the Sultan and his family from 1478 to 1856. Here, you can enjoy its architecture and mosaics, and also see exhibits of the empire's treasures, armor, and weapons, the palace kitchens, among many other interesting sections. This is one of the main monuments of Istanbul and was built between 532 and 537 during the Byzantine Empire. As of January 15 of 2024, new rules and an entrance fee were implemented for every visitor. You can watch this other video where I share all the information in detail. Sultan Ahmed Mosque, built between 1609 and 1660, during the Sultanate of Sultan Ahmed I. It is also located in Sultan Ahmed Square and faces Hagia Sophia. It's known as the Blue Mosque for its thousands of tiles in different shades of blue that adorn its wonderful interior. It's located next to Hagia Sophia on the other side of the charm line. It's another of the sites that should be visited in the city. Built during the Byzantine Empire, between 527 and 565 for water reservoir and it is famous for its impressive marble columns and the heads of Medusa. Next to the Blue Mosque, we can admire the area where the famous Hippodrome of Constantinople was once located, which was a center of fun and entertainment in the ancient capital city of the Byzantine Empire. Today, we can still see some of the monuments that were part of this structure such as the Obelisk of Theodosius, the Walled Obelisk, and the Serpent Column. Start in one of the largest and oldest cover bazaars in the world. This bazaar has almost 4,000 stores along 61 streets. It opened to the public in 1456. This place is quite colorful and very frequented, especially among tourists. Whether you want to buy or just walk through its streets, it is a place that you must visit. This is one of the most beautiful and impressive mosques in the city, built between 5050 and 1557 by the imperial architect Sinan, under the orders of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. This mosque is truly a gem inside and out. One of the most impressive views of the city are from the mosque's gardens. Now it's time to explore another of the most traditional and ancient bazaars in the city, the Spice Bazaar, built in 1660. Here we can find all kinds of spices, Turkish delights, among many other products. To end the day, nothing better than a beautiful tour of the Bosphorus. We recommend doing it in the afternoon before sunset as Istanbul offers an unforgettable show with its sunsets from the Bosphorus. You can rent either a private tour of the Bosphorus or take the collective ferry tours for maximum $10 per person. If you want to book the private yacht by the Bosphorus, you can contact us through ReminderTour.com. The link will be in the description box and pinned comment. For the collective tours, they can be taken from almost any port in the city, including Eminönü, Kabataş, Kadiköy, or Üsküdar. The companies that offer the tours are Turiol, Şehir Hatları, or Dentur Abrasia. In this colorful and photogenic neighborhood, we can find churches, synagogues, and mosques in one same place. It was one of the areas where communities of Jews, Armenians, Greeks, and Muslims lived together. That is why we will find the traces that each of these communities left. This area is one of the most active in the city, where you can find hundreds of shops, cafes, and restaurants to enjoy the day. Start from Taksim Square and continue to Isikla Street. Visit the largest and most important Catholic church in Istanbul, St. Anthony of Padua. You will continue until you reach the Galata Tower and enjoy a coffee or a dessert in one of the many lovely cafes and restaurants in this area. Right after Galata Tower and the tram line, you'll connect to another great area by the shores of the Bosphorus, 
Here you can find a great variety of restaurants, cafes, and even bars to enjoy. Its colorful streets are worthy of being photographed. Now it's time to explore a bit of the Asian side, which also has plenty to offer. Another Ottoman palace by the shores of the Bosphorus and under the bridge. It offers outstanding views of the shores and is a great place for great photos too. Like Balat and Fener, Kuzgunjuk in the past used to be one of the settlements of communities of Jews, Armenians, Greeks, and Muslims. For this reason, we will find churches, synagogues, and mosques all together. Do not forget to go up the hill in one of its streets to enjoy beautiful views of the Bosphorus. Take the bus back to Uzgudar port. Once in the port, walk along the coast where you will have beautiful views, including a close-up of the Maiden's Tower, another outstanding monument, especially at sunset. This is one of the main areas of the Asian side of the city, and one of the most active at all times. This is also one of the best places in Istanbul for a foodie tour. In case you also want to enjoy the nightlife, this is the right place as there are many bars to enjoy the night. Do not miss walking towards Moda, one of the most famous neighborhoods in the area and where you can enjoy beautiful views of the Sea of Marmara. If you liked this itinerary and found it useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos about Istanbul every week. See you next time. Bye-bye.